Good day to you from ChemHelp ASAP. We're going to talk about molecular, molecular flexibility and this idea of Newman projections. So as it turns out, when you talk about people, a person, a person has multiple conformations and we refer to these as standing up or sitting down or lying down. Regardless of the shape of the person, it's still that same person. And the shape of the person can define what activities that person is doing. If they're eating, they're likely sitting down. If they're sleeping, they're likely lying down. So different shapes of people lead to certain activities. The same thing is true in molecules. Molecules have different shapes. And each of these shapes may lead to a certain type of chemical reactivity. So we need to understand how to talk about shapes so that we can further understand things like chemical reactivity. So in the bottom left of the screen, we have drawn a picture of a very simple molecule, ethane. I'm going to draw this in a slightly different way. I'm going to draw a simple line. That is our carbon-carbon sigma bond. So there's a carbon and there's a carbon. And now off of this, I'm going to draw these tetrahedral carbons. And we know when we draw tetrahedral sp3 hybridized carbons, we need two lines, two bonds in the plane of the writing surface. And so here are our hydrogens two of our hydrogens, and one of those is coming off carbon one, and one is coming off carbon two. And now we need to fill in the other hydrogens, and these are going to be out of plane hydrogens, and we'll have one coming up out of the plane, and one will be hashed and going back into the writing surface. You know, not the greatest picture, but, but that's one representation of this molecule, and we're trying to, rep, trying to represent it, represent it three-dimensionally. And this actually, this type of picture has a name. It's called a sawhorse diagram. And that's one way to show shape. As it turns out, there's another way, which we will rely upon quite a bit in this series of videos. Now, I want to envision taking my eyeball and looking down this bond, this bond of carbon one to carbon two. Now, if we were in the page of the writing surface, and let's draw ahead here. Here's, uh, this is gonna be horrific. I got a nose, a chin and a mouth. Okay, there we are. So we're looking down that bond, and if we were looking down the bond, what would we see? Well, would we, we would see in front of us a circle, and that would be a carbon atom, and that would be carbon atom number one would be in front. We couldn't exactly see carbon two because it's tucked behind carbon one, but off of carbon one, pointing up would be a hydrogen. Pointing to our left would be this particular hydrogen, the hash bond. Coming off to our right would be the bolded bond, the wedge bond, and then directly behind those, this hydrogen on carbon number two would also be kind of hidden behind that top hydrogen. And the other hydrogens would also be hidden behind the front hydrogens on carbon one. So these are the hydrogens on carbon two. This representation is called a Newman projection. And Newman projections are a really common way to represent molecular flexibility and conformational analysis. And we will rely on them quite a bit throughout this particular play playlist. So we've learned about the importance of flexibility and two ways to represent different conformations through a sawhorse diagram and through a Newman projection.